Hi everyone, my name is Amitesh and in this video we're going to go through the super simple, elegant and rigorous mathematical proof of what limit x goes to zero of sine x over x is and this is a magic spell for any trigonometric zero over zero limit. So once you know what this is, you can find any such trigonometric zero over zero limit and I've done a video on that on my channel, please check it out. This video you're going to really understand this very conceptually and this is as I've taught multiple times at Princeton University. I've used this limit a lot when I've taught um, freshman calculus and I'm going to explain to you exactly why this is true as a research mathematician thinks about it and so let's just dive right into it. So first of all limit x goes to zero of sine x over x it's a zero over zero indeterminate form because as x approaches zero sine x approaches zero and x approaches zero. So you have to kind of do something with it and if you know L'Hopital's rule that's going to actually be circular reasoning. You can't just differentiate top and bottom because this is actually the limit definition of the derivative of sine x at zero. So L'Hopital's rule is circular, we have to go straight into the definition of sine and here's going to be a really beautiful picture for understanding this and you know even if you don't like geometry or trig you're gonna love this picture. You know I really really love this proof. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a circle and the circle is going to have radius one okay and we're going to remember the definition of sine theta. Sine theta is if I have an angle of theta and here theta is approaching zero, right? So x approaches zero or theta approaches zero. If I have an angle of theta here, then the point on the unit circle, it's x and y coordinates are cosine theta and sine theta. So this is going to be cosine theta comma sine theta. That is the definition of sine and cosine basically. For example, if you draw a right triangle here, then basically we know that because the hypotenuse is one, it's a circle of radius one, we know that the base and the height are going to be cosine theta and sine theta if you know the opposite over hypotenuse or adjacent over hypotenuse definitions of the trig functions, it's the same thing. So here we've got cosine theta, sine theta, and the first observation we're going to make is we're going to really sandwich the sine x over x between two quantities that approach one, and therefore show that this limit is also going to approach one. So what are the quantities? The first quantity is going to be as follows. So I'm going to observe that the length of this arc, right, this green arc I'm drawing here, what is its length going to be? Well, if the angle is theta, we know that the whole circumference, right, the whole circumference of the circle, if a circle has radius one, it's going to be two pi. That's the definition of pi. Pi is defined to be the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. It's not a theorem, it's a definition. So because we know the whole circumference, which is an angle in radians of two pi, has length two pi, radians, by definition of radians, basically the circumference of the arc or the length of this arc here is just going to be theta. And the other thing is we know that the height of this black line is going to be sine theta. And the point is that the height of that black line is less than the length of the arc. Why is that? Well, I can show you by drawing the following line. Let's draw a straight line that goes from this point all the way to this point on the circle, which is one zero. Now we know that the length of a side on this circle, this uh, side of this triangle, this black vertical line is less than that hypotenuse, which is the red line, right? One side length is always going to be the hypotenuse is the maximum side length of the circle. And that hypotenuse is the shortest line segment that goes from this point cosine theta comma sine theta to this point one comma zero. So its length is going to be less than the length of any other path that goes from cosine theta comma sine theta to one comma zero. So therefore its length is going to be less than theta. And so therefore sine theta is less than theta. So I've been completely rigorous in explaining this as to why sine theta is less than theta. Okay, so that's number one, sine theta is less than theta. So therefore sine theta over theta is going to be less than one. Okay, so that's the cool thing. So if the limit exists, which you don't yet know it does, it has to be less than one. Okay, that's number one. Number two is I'm going to now do something else with this picture. So before I do that, I'm going to erase the sine theta here. I'm going to draw another picture, another circle inside here, which is going to be in green. Okay, so here's going to be the circle. It's going to be a circle that goes like this. It's a smaller circle. It's going to be in green and its radius is going to be what? That's the question for you. It kind of goes like this, it cuts the point here on the x-axis. We know that this point here has, length, has coordinates cosine theta and sine theta. So therefore, the x-coordinate is going to be the radius of the circle is going to be cosine theta. Okay, so one is going to be the whole radius of the big circle, but the smaller green circle is going to have radius cosine theta. And so now we know that radius is going to be cosine theta, we're going to do another estimate. Okay, the estimate is going to be that this black vertical line, right? This black vertical line here, we've already explained, that is the length sine theta. That has length sine theta. Now, this arc of this circle that goes like this, its length is going to be less than the length of the black vertical line. 
Why is that? Okay, so we have to be super rigorous here. Why is that? Well, the reason we can, do, we can think of it that way is because if you look at that circle and you draw sort of a tangent, right? So I kind of draw, um, draw a tangent that goes like this, um, that makes a right angle here, then that red line, right? That red line is going to be, is going to have length that is going to be less than the length of the black line up to this point, right? And so therefore, if we take this red line and then this red part, so if we do something like this, its length is going to be greater than the length of that green arc of the circle of radius cosine theta, but its length is also going to be length, less than the length of the vertical black line, which is sine theta. So therefore, the length of this arc of the circle of radius cosine theta is going to be less than the length of the vertical black line, which is sine theta. What is the length of the arc? If the circle is radius cosine theta, the length of the arc is going to be theta times cosine theta because the arc is an angle of theta degrees. And so for a circle of radius one, the length of the arc is just theta and it scales according to the radius. So remember like two pi r is the formula for the circumference. So again, if you scale, if the radius instead of one is cosine theta, instead of having an arc length of theta for a radian degree or radian angle of theta, you're going to have an arc length of theta cosine theta. Okay, so what that is going to show you is the following. It's going to show you that therefore theta cosine theta is going to be less than sine theta, which therefore implies that cosine theta is less than sine theta over theta. So these are going to be the key estimates we need that is going to sandwich sine theta over theta between two quantities, cosine theta and one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this and now tell you what the limit is. So this is going to be the sandwich theorem, which is intuitively obvious, but requires a rigorous sort of mathematical proof. But we're not going to do that in this video. You know, maybe I'll have another video on my channel. But basically, we've got these estimates that cosine theta is going to be less than sine theta over theta is going to be less than one right? As theta approaches zero. Okay, so here our picture is suggestive, you know, as theta approaches zero is all we care about. So of course, if theta is negative, you know, you can do the reflective picture across the x-axis. So there's nothing special there. But because of this, as theta approaches zero, what we know is that because of this formula, we can conclude that, or because of these inequalities, we can conclude that um, the limit as theta approaches zero of cosine theta is going to be less than or equal to the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta, which is going to be less than or equal to the limit as theta approaches zero of one, okay? And so because both the limits of cosine theta and one, which is just a constant, exist as theta approaches zero, the limit of sine theta over theta also exists as theta approaches zero because it's sandwiched between the two limits and they're equal to each other, that's crucial. So because the two limits, cosine theta and one, cosine theta as theta approaches zero is one. You can even see it from this figure, right? As theta approaches zero, the length of this cosine theta going up to here, this point is going to approach the point one comma zero, and we know cosine zero is one. Okay, cosine is a continuous function, so we therefore get that one is less than or equal to, so I'm gonna write this, one is less than or equal to the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta, which is less than or equal to one, and of course, if a number is greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to one, it has to be equal to one. So that concludes the proof of the theorem, um, and that's a geometric proof, and you can also do this with areas. You know, instead of, arc lengths you can approximate with areas, you can sort of say the area of the sector of the circle is less than or equal to the area of the triangle is less than or equal to the area of the big sector of the circle of radius one, and the little sector of, of the circle of radius cosine theta is less than the area of this black triangle. So try that out, you know, try that out, work that out and see what, it, what you get. I like the arc length proof because it's really minimalist, you know, it just uses the definition of arc length, which is basically the definition of pi, you know, that you can find the arc lengths of these kind of um, arcs on the circle and, you know, finding the definition of cosine theta and sine theta comes pretty quickly. And in fact, with the proof or the theorem that limit theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is one, you can also give a proof of what the area of a circle is. Okay, so um, I, I could do that in another video, so I'd love to do it. So there are so many different ways of looking at this. Here's one, if you have another, drop a comment down below. Try to work out the area formulation. Drop a comment down below, I'd love to see it. And you know, please, you know, if you've watched this far, I'm so grateful for you know, your, your time and your attention, and I hope I was able to support you. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help as many people as possible to create infinite free accessible math education worldwide at all levels of math. I'm just trying to create a library of math and you know, my channel's right now a bit smaller, but I'm trying to grow it. And by liking, subscribing, watching as you've already done and spreading the words to friends, family and other students, you know, if you're studying in high school or college, it really makes a big difference. You know, if you're finding the content 
content valuable, to help disseminate the content to more people and help as many people as possible. I've got math, at basic math, advanced math, intermediate math, and you know, this, the, all the math I do is as accessible as possible. You basically just need to know what sine and cosine is, and here's the argument. You know, that's all there is. I try to take you on a journey rather than giving you like a formal presentation of concepts. So thank you so much for watching. Wishing you all the best. I'm super excited to see you in the next video. Please take care and I hope to see you achieve all your goals and to be happy, healthy and successful. And I will see you in the next video. So I'm super excited for that and I'll see you soon.